It's cute, isn't it? Well, let me tell you that if you're watching this video, you probably felt the disappointment if you experienced baby's bottom. If you're a fun pen collector or a fun pen user, you probably know where I'm going with this. Well, hello there. Welcome to the channel again. It's your host, Amy from Pen Venture, and today we are going to talk about baby's bottom. It sounds cute and all, and I did some research and put up a plan how to deal with this and how to get it solved. And we have four chapters. First of all, what is it? Second, how to recognize it. Third, react and deal with it. And number four, get over it. Yes, it's important, get over it. But let's start with the first question. What is it? Well, baby's bottom is a problem that is experienced by a lot of people. It is not something that is very rare. And myself, I dealt with this problem in my past. I did some drawing so you guys can better understand what I'm talking about. Imagine the two tines of the nib being my knuckles like this, you see? Well, baby's bottom is happening due to the fact that the nib is over polished. The inside of the tine near the slit, it's so polished, it forms a small gap where the nib doesn't have grip and the ink is not transferred to the paper. And we have skippings, hard starts, and your fun pen is not working properly. The first image is the problem. We have the two tines that are not touching and we have that small area in between the tines at the base where there is some space. That is baby's bottom. And I'm sure many of you have experienced this problem, myself as well. Well, imagine yourself receiving your favorite fun pen. You worked hard, you earned the funds and you spent those money on your favorite writing instrument. It doesn't matter if it's cheap, if it's expensive, if it's collectible, if it's not, doesn't matter. Well, you spend those money. You expect the parcel to arrive at your door for a few days. Let's say just a few days. Let's be realistic. It probably is like a week or so. And you get the parcel. You open it. You're excited. You want to see what's inside. You want to fill up the fun pen with ink and you're happy and you get to the paper and that final moment when you put the nib to the paper, it happens. It starts to skip and you feel disappointed because you spent a lot of money. And also you feel remorseful because it's your hard earned funds and you start to doubt yourself. How am I going to fix this? And it happens. It's not very, very uncommon. It happens and you need to deal with this. I felt this feeling many times in my collecting years. And this is why I want to talk to you and to give you a better understanding of what is going on and how to deal with this. In the second picture on this paper, you will find the okay nib tines. So this is how they should look. How do we get there? Good question. Before rushing to that, let's go to question number two, which is how to recognize it. A nib can have a lot of problems, but not all problems are baby's bottom. How we can recognize it. It does happen to pretty much, or at least it can happen to pretty much any single font pen that has a nib. Doesn't matter if it's titanium, if it's steel, if it's gold, it doesn't matter. It happens from time to time, from a font pen to another, it happens. Should we blame the manufacturer? No because many manufacturers will not have the capability of checking every single nib. You have to understand that with production, you need a certain number above which you can be profitable and stay in business. And although checks are a well needed option, in this case, it's not possible, or at least it's not totally possible. It's doable in a certain degree, 
but not to check every single pan. You need to go by thrust because most of the pans that use nibs, those nibs are not made in house. If they are not made in house, let's just say that it's not the manufacturer's fault for a nib that has baby's bottom. They can check and adjust it, but I think you guys that are watching this video need to ask the retailer to check the nib for you. I personally check each and every nib before sending it out to the customer. So I make sure this kind of problem doesn't happen. But let's go back. How do we recognize it? We will see that the pan is starting to skip. It skips most likely when you start to write. When you put down the nib to the paper and just start on word, it has a hard start or it's skipping and it feels glassy, glassy smooth. It's very easy to identify it if you know how nibs are working. If it's not scratching and it hard starts and it skips and you have a good quality paper, be very careful because a smooth paper like Clear La Fontaine or Rhodium will enhance the probability of a nib to skip. So if it has a small, small, small baby's bottom, it can probably show up the problems on Rhodia and Claire Lafontaine. But if the nib is properly adjusted, it should run smooth on these papers too and not show any problems. You can't say that is a baby's bottom problem when you have, for example, let's say just you have something that is scratchy and it's peeling all over the place and it's dry and it skips, you have to have an eye to identify this matter to know how to deal with it. Before going too much into this, I'm gonna move briefly to the number three question on that list, react and deal with it. If you go like a big crybaby and write down to the manufacturer saying that the nib is to blame, there is a problem, I can't understand because I spend all of my money on this font pen and so and so on. Well, that is not how to deal with it. First of all, you should have asked your retailer to check the nib for you. Any single retailer that sells font pen needs to know how to adjust your nib. Be very careful, that is important. Probably you will need to decide if you want to take care of this problem yourself or you want to send the font pen to a nib miser to deal with this problem or you should send it back to the manufacturer. We'll give you the split in between every single decision that you will make. First of all, if you want to... <laughs> I'll be right back. Looks like I need to take a break because baby Emily is messing with my stuff. And we're back. I'm sorry, but baby Emily is very curious and she likes to drop by unannounced. Well, let's go into first topic. When you take care of that problem yourself, when you do so, first of all, you need to be very careful because you can ruin a nib and some nibs are very expensive. Don't get me wrong. I've ruined a few, so I know. And you need to have some supplies. You need some abrasive paper of different grids and you need to have a loop, patience, a steady hand. I don't recommend you trying this if you don't have experience. I know there is a lot of topics, uh, tutorials, uh, how to do it and so on. Well, I followed all those tutorials and I still managed to ruin three or four nibs, like for example, of 200 euros per one. So it's costly. It can also make you feel a lot worse than having a nib with a problem. You can ruin that nib completely. So avoid taking care of the problem yourself if you are not experienced enough to try it, if you don't have the knowledge or if you don't have the, um, the tools to do it. Abrasive paper, loop, and all of that. Into abrasive paper, I could do an entire video for this chapter. I'm not going to even go into the details. If you want me to go into the details, I should do a video 
for abrasive paper itself because it's an art. Comment down below if you want me to do a entire video based on abrasive paper and how to resolve the baby's bottom problem on your nibs or how to make them smoother. Let's move to instance number two, when you need a nib meister. For example, many of you live in the US or UK or anywhere else where there is a lot of trained people or experienced people to deal with nibs. For example, in US, you have Dan Smith, you have Mike Masuyama, you have Mark Bacchus, and those are just the ones that came up right now. There are many others. You can send the fond pen to them and they will fix your nib, adjust it to perfection, and they can take care of you in every single aspect of nibs. They can re-grind them. You can have special grinds. They can also take your nib from a fine point to a extra fine, from a medium to a fine. I'm not sure they can take your extra fine to a double broad, but anything besides that, they can handle that. You are blessed to have the opportunity to have such people in your country that you can call on and they will resolve the issue for you. Where I live, there isn't anyone. I had to learn it myself, how to deal with this. And I think it's a valuable skill to have in this industry. Number three, and I was telling you, you can either take care of yourself, you can send it to a nib, meister. Number three is sending it to a manufacturer. In case number one, if you do it yourself, you will risk to ruin the nib. In the second case, if you send it to a nib master, it's a long waiting list from weeks to months. I'm not sure. Number three is when you take it to the manufacturer. Well, probably, I don't know how to say this. Probably it's better to leave this as a last reserve because there are many, many other font pens to repair when you send your nib to the manufacturer. Usually this kind of problem requires a lot of attention and you can actually receive a nib that writes the same in regards to that with problems. Be very careful. This is considering your choice, considering the manufacturer, it's highly debatable. Myself, I learned to work on my nibs because I wanted to avoid things like this. Number four on the list, right here, we have get over it. Yes, it's not the end of the world. If you experience this problem, it may seem like so, but it's not. You need to understand that font pens work with very, very tiny tolerances. So you can very easily overdo it. And there is no one to blame for that. For example, there is in a single day, maybe hundreds of nibs or if not thousands of nibs created. Out of those, it's inevitable to have a few with different problems like this one. And you should not overthink or overreact to such a problem. You need to address it correctly and you need to get over it because a lot of people just hold on to a mentality. If it has problems, all other font pens will have problems. This is wrong. This is what you shouldn't have as a mindset if you want to be a happy font pen user, collector, or if you want to enjoy writing with a font pen. You need to get over it. You need to find a solution. And I think I give you enough information to find a proper solution. Well, I think this is it. If you acquire a font pen from PenVenture, you will be sure that this kind of problem will not happen because I will check each and every single nib individually and correct such problems. And most of the times, if you're not a returning customer, you will receive an email from myself asking if you are a lefty or if you rotate the font pen when you're writing or what paper do you use? That is important because if you use Claire Lafontaine or Rodia paper, I need to know that because I can over smooth a nib and it can have baby's bottom. Try to demand that kind of service from your font pen retailer. 
Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you find this useful, give it a thumbs up. Come on. And if you want to support me doing videos like this, please subscribe to the YouTube channel by clicking here and turn the notification bell on. And if you want to watch some of my content, click on this video and enjoy it. My name is Emi and I look forward to seeing you next video. Take care. Bye bye.